Okay, so let's take a look at the electric guitar. The electric guitar uh, sometimes uses a lead instrument uh, uh, or uh, a nice uh, accent, a, uh, a solo instrument. Uh, but because of its very nature, there really is only one way to use a microphone on an electric guitar. Uh, but it's a way that you might not have considered. So, Andrew, walk us through that. Well, at the barn, we found a really, uh, really cool amp with a 12-inch speaker in it. Um, now, one thing to know about uh, guitars is uh, there's, there's uh, three different things that, that influence the sound. We have the guitar, we have any effects that, that, the, uh, that the player uses, and then we have the amp. The amp is something that we can really fine tune with microphone placement uh, to, uh, to to make it sound a lot more uh, how we want it to sound and make it fit into the the mix a little bit more. Um, most amps have a uh, a grill covering uh, the speaker, so our first task is to identify where that speaker actually is. Uh, to maximize isolation, uh, we usually place a dynamic mic right up against the grill cloth. Now, guitar amps can get quite loud, so we need the dynamic mic to handle the high SPL. Where we place the mic against the speaker cone can shape the final sound. Uh, speaker cones are brighter in the center and then darkest on the edges. We'll use this information to help tailor the sound we want. Uh, we can place the mic in the center to brighten up a muddy or a dark guitar. And if the sound is already too bright, we can move the mic closer to the edge to soften it up. Now, let's listen as we demonstrate with an MD-421, starting in the center, we'll see it move to the edge, and then we'll move it back to the center. Now you could really hear the difference there, exactly as Andrew said. When you put the microphone in the center of the speaker, it's brighter. Some people would say that it was almost tinny, but it depends upon what you're looking for. If you're looking for an electric guitar that's really going to cut through and bite, then that's the sound you might be looking for. If you're looking for a little bit mellower sound, then go ahead and slide it over to the edge. Uh, a couple of things. I said there was only one way to mic an electric guitar, and you, I'm sure many of you said, wait a minute, what, what in the world are you talking about? You can put a DI on there, you can do this and that and the other thing. Well, a, with an electric guitar, the amplifier is such an important part of the sound of the electric guitar that using a DI takes all that away. Now, if your electric guitarist is using pedals and pods, and particularly pods that have a lot of effects, you can simulate an amplifier, and then you can take a direct out. But if your electric guitarist is using an amplifier, uh, you're going to have quite a fight to get that kind of quality and the sound they're looking for uh, without a microphone. So I'd recommend that you go ahead and do like we just did here. Take that amplifier, the guitar amp, set it up close to the player and use that as his monitor, and then put a, a good mic on there. And the mic that, uh, uh, that the team used was the MD-421. And the MD-421 is a large diaphragm dynamic microphone. This is the classic microphone you think about when you think of Sennheiser. It's kind of got that rectangular, almost torpedo-y kind of a look to it. Uh, and this is a recording studio quality microphone. The large diaphragm, dynamic, doesn't require phantom power. Um, this, this is one of the mics that built Sennheiser's reputation for high quality sound. Uh, now they've also developed over the last 20 years another uh, whole series of microphones. And let's, so let's take another uh, look at a different microphone that you might use on an electric guitar amp. Right, well this is the a lollipop shaped mic. Uh, this is a E906. And a lot of engineers like to use this because it has the, has the flat surface and it just allows us to hang the mic right over the uh, edge of the amp, usually through the handle, and then just resting right up against the, the speaker cloth. So it lays flush against the cloth, and it maximizes our isolation, and it minimizes stage clutter. It's one last stand that we have to deal with.
Now, when hanging these mics over the amp, uh, rather than uh, moving the mic side to side to get the, uh, the tone that we want, um, it's best to just uh, move it up and down. We're still going from center to the edge. Um, now, just so we can demonstrate what a different mic sounds like, uh, let's listen to this clip. Okay, so a, a, so a different sound. The 421, I think, had a little bit fuller sound. Uh, this one has a little bit more of an attacky sound. This is the famous lollipop microphone. And in fact, it's a side entry microphone. You can see the word front here. Uh, don't put it on the back side because that's the rejection side. Uh, so this microphone drops easily in front of an amplifier. Just slide it right down on the cord like we showed you. Uh, and it makes a perfect guitar amplifier that uh, uh, hangs off the cord. Uh, I've seen guys try and do this with a handheld vocal microphone, a ball type of microphone, and I really don't recommend that. The ball type microphones tend to be, uh, they don't have a very consistent polar pattern off the side, so you're going to get a really colored sound. And the directivity is off the bottom, so you're not going to get the isolation that you do off of this microphone. Now, like we said, there's no absolutely perfect or right way to mic, so if you're looking for a colored sound with not a lot of isolation, then go ahead and drop a ball type microphone down in front of an amplifier but I think you're going to enjoy the sound you're getting off of this uh, much better using that same technique. All right, let's take a look at a bass guitar, Andrew. Okay. Well, a bass guitar is typically fed uh, directly into a mixing board using a DI, whether it's coming straight out of the bass itself or through an amplifier, and then maybe we're just using the amp for stage monitoring. Um, what we're going to talk about, though, is supplementing a DI with a microphone. Now, much like uh, the guitar amp concept that, that we had mentioned before, the amp itself is oftentimes considered an instrument of the player. With the DI, we usually don't get the nice bass resonance. We're getting more of a, of a direct sound, which is why you know, it's called a, a direct input. Now, with the mic, we can uh, uh, simulate what our ears are actually hearing and amplify that in addition to the direct sound, it's really good to just mix the two together. Now, when we're, uh, when we're miking a bass guitar amp, uh, we definitely want to make sure uh, that, that we're using a dynamic mic since it is such a high SPL. And we want to use a mic that's optimized for low frequencies. So in this case, we're going to use an E602, which was actually the same microphone uh, that we used on the, on the kick mic. Um, so, in the next clip, we're going to listen to the bass with just the sound of the DI, and then we're going to add the E602 positioned at the center of the cone, and then we're going uh, to hear the blend between the two. So, so let's, let's hear what that sounds like. So at first you heard that very clean, uh, almost a dry bass sound, and then when we mixed in the microphone, it started to fatten it up a bit. You can't accomplish that with EQ. You can get more of the clean and dry sound off the DI, uh, but you're not going to get that fatter sound. So uh, most of us just take the bass, run it through a DI, and up to the system, uh, and you know that's okay. But if you're looking for a fatter bass sound, uh, then take a large diaphragm dynamic microphone uh, like we're showing you here, stick it on that bass amp. Again, listen, uh, make sure that you are in phase as you're mixing those two sources together, uh, and you may have to move the microphone around a little bit on the cone to make sure that happens, but you'll get a fatter kind of a bass sound, which is very pleasing. And, and is more similar to the bass amplifier that your player is using. So let's take a look at another instrument commonly fed by a, a DI direct in, uh, uh, but can benefit from a microphone, and that's the acoustic guitar. Well, acoustic guitars um, are it's an instrument that resonates over the whole body. Now, an electric acoustic, when we say that, just means that it utilizes an onboard pickup system. Now. 
Oftentimes, uh, we see players plug into maybe a wireless pack that gives them mobility all over the stage, and it's just using the, the pickup on board in the, in the guitar. That works great. Um, however, oftentimes, we're not hearing the sound of the guitar itself. We're hearing more of an electronic sound. Um, so if possible, we always like to add an extra uh, microphone just, again, either to supplement the DI or instead of, uh, of the DI, the pickup. We, we use a, uh, a um, condenser microphone, small diaphragm condenser. In this case, uh, we use the E914, which was actually the same mic that we used on the overheads. It works great for both. Um, the, j just another note, the DI is great for clear uh, isolation, uh, and, and the mic isn't going to offer that as much, but it may yield to, uh, to the sound that we were really looking for. So let's take a look at a, a typical acoustic with a pretty good onboard pickup system and then see what the mic is adding and what it can do for us. So now what we're doing here is we've added the 914 pointed at the 12th fret. Um, let's... Uh, Let's listen. We're going to play the DI and then we'll add in the 914. Okay, so what you should have heard at the beginning of that clip was a dry, uh, what I'd call a functional acoustic guitar sound. Um, it was okay, but it, it wasn't uh, real interesting, didn't have a lot of uh, overtones to it. When we mixed in the microphone, all of a sudden that guitar started to fill out, had some overtones, you could start to hear a little bit of the string sound in, in what I would call a more organic acoustic guitar sound. So I really do like both. I like the pickup and the natural. Now again, if you've got high volume monitors and a lot of sound on stage, it's going to be difficult to pull it off, but if you have more of an acoustic set, then I definitely recommend going this way. And of course, you can always mic the amplifier like we showed you uh, on, the, on the electric guitar and the bass guitar using the lollipop microphone if they're doing a lot of effects in, the, uh, in their pods and the amplifier. But uh, we just thought you wanted to listen to this because uh, what a difference in that acoustic guitar and the depth of that acoustic guitar, and it's ideal for acoustic sets that you, that you might be doing. Okay, so uh, uh, let's talk about um, uh, a little bit about the sweet spot, Andrew. Well, the way that we mic this guitar specifically, we definitely want a condenser mic again, uh, just so it does pick up the detail and, and the transient response. Uh, and an acoustic can, can really benefit uh, from that. Now, the sweet spot on a guitar is typically between uh, the 12th and the 15th fret. Um, we'll place a condenser mic roughly three to six inches in front of the guitar, and we'll get closer on loud stages just to provide some more isolation and pull back a little when we have the opportunity to do so, if we can, without bleed. This area usually produces a balanced sound. Now, a large diaphragm condenser can sound uh, great uh, over a uh, small diaphragm condenser, uh, these are uh, typically studio uh, recording mics, uh, and, and the uh, MK4 in this particular instance worked really good. This is a large diaphragm condenser. It has a, a one-inch uh, capsule. It's a fixed cardioid pattern. Uh, it requires phantom power. And this is Sennheiser's first side address condenser mic featuring a large diaphragm 48-volt capsule. Now, in the next clip, we'll listen to the large diaphragm condenser um, and this is the Sennheiser MK4, and this is with no onboard pickups, just the mic. Yeah. 
So if I'm doing an acoustic set, that's the sound I want. That, I want that fullness. There with the, uh, you could hear that pick. You can hear the rhythm because you're using the rhythm of the acoustic guitar to lead worship. And so that is providing the, the, uh, the beat, the rhythm, if you will, uh, for the uh, congregation. Um, and in an acoustic set, you don't have a lot of uh, monitor sound, a lot of other instruments. So uh, that, that was just ideal. That was a perfect sound, in my opinion, for acoustic leading worship. Uh, again, no pickup. Uh, it was the MK4, and this is one of my new favorite microphones. I've always loved large diaphragm condenser microphones. I've used them for choirs for years. Uh, and uh, this one is a side entry, so it makes it easy to go ahead and set it up uh, and keep it out of the way of somebody that's picking. Uh, and it uh, provides that kind of incredible fat uh, recording studio type of a sound with articulation. So the MK4 large diaphragm condenser, uh, it's just absolutely one of my favorites. Now, let me tell you a great example of listening to the sweet spot of an instrument. The acoustic that Mike was playing here uh, at the barn, it sounded great at the 15th fret. But we also noticed that it projected a little more fully in the bouts, which was uh, just above or below the, uh, the neck. So we adjusted our mic position to capture that sweet spot that worked perfectly on that particular guitar. Now, this can be a challenge in a live situation. Uh, the player may uh, move around quite a bit, and it's really hard to keep the instrument uh, focused in that sweet spot. Uh, so the key to this is communicate. Communicate with your uh, musicians. Tell them what you're trying to accomplish. Let them hear it and say, look, if you keep your, uh, your microphone or your guitar positioned in this way, it's going to sound like this. Communicate, and it goes a long way. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the things we continue to talk about is listening. Um, it, you want to listen to that. Uh, use your ears, listen to the instrument, see where it sounds the best. A lot of people will point that microphone right at the sound hole. They get that boomy sound. We found that it sounded better out at the 15th fret in this particular case. And the only way you do that is by listening either with your ears right up next to the instrument or by positioning the microphone and going back and listening on the, uh, on the headphones. So it's, it's all about li the, the listening art.